Welcome to part two of this series on how to make money with stocks. In the last video, I showed you how to use Andrew's Pitchfork and we got a lot of good emails from that. So I decided to do it again and take it a little more advanced today. So let's jump right into it. So today I'm going to be using an intraday chart. This is actually a three minute chart of Apple. The last video I showed you it on daily chart. And we just go up here to the Andrews Pitchfork because I want to show you a couple of different things, a little more advanced than last time. So first of all, we can span from one day to the next. That's the first thing I want to share with you. So here is one day and then here's the next. This uh, on the left of this vertical line is um, August 15th and then to the right of the vertical line is August 16th. But um, yes, you can do this across from one day to the next. So we've got our low and then our higher high and our higher low. And that's the first place we use to draw our lines. And then we have our three tines. Here's the handle and there's our main tine. And then our two tines on the opposite side of that. Now remember, as long as it stays within these tines, we are considering that it is going to be in a relatively strong position from this initial impulse move relative to that. Once it breaks outside of this area here and goes down here, then that's when we want to be out. And especially here, that would be our ultimate stop if we wanted to try to hang in there for riding through some noise. But you can see it did pretty well right now. So if you got out here, you did pretty good. In fact, the 50 MA turns over. That's what that line is there. And we actually get a short trade there. But here's what's different than what I talked about in part one. In part, we're looking for an uptrend. And I talked about using this for staying in long trends and getting out of short trends. So basically, we were using the Andrews Pitchfork on when to get out when it breaks out of the trend to the bottom side. However, look what we have here. Here's the upper time, and it's an uptrend, and it goes way above the upper time, way above it. So here is a new rule for you. This is an exhaustion move. When it gets outside of this in a bullish territory where you would expect it to stay within these times, and instead of just using it as a stop going against the trend, what if it goes dramatically in the direction of the trend? Well, I would get out then. Why? Because that is an exhaustion move. It's way beyond the normal energy of the market. So now we could have stayed in longer and we get out over here. But the problem is, look, here we get out at this price. Here we get out at that price. Now, these are optimal prices, obviously. But um, you get your five wave move, which is an average trend, three and five. And we just get out then because we say, oh, OK based on the geometry of the pitchfork, we have an exhaustion move there. So this price is normally going to be much better than if I wait for the trailing stop using the Andrews pitchfork. Now, let's take the same chart and look at it in the opposite direction going down. OK, so let me give you a couple more advanced tips here. I give a lot of basic stuff in these videos, but I, once in a while I like to do something a little more advanced for the advanced traders as well. So now our normal way of drawing an Andrews pitchfork, of course, would be from a high that stands out to the low to the next lower high. If we do that off of here, remember, this is where I, I showed you where we would optimally get out at a wave five after that explosive move to the upside and exhaustion move. But here's the problem. If you do it on an exhaustion move in the opposite direction, the Andrews pitchfork is not going to work very well. And there's a very logical reason for that. It's simply that this is not a normal oh, sine wave type of pattern, very symmetrical type pattern. It's an exhaustion pattern. It's an extreme pattern. So if you draw it from there to there to there, you're not measuring the normal type of energy in the market. In other words, the normal cycles of the market. It's off of an extreme move. So that's one exception where we don't want to do that. So we want to go ahead and measure it off of a more normal cycle pattern, a more symmetrical pattern that is typical for the markets. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this situation, see there's an F, a G, and then here's our next, um, well, the main thing here is this is a 50 period SMA. 50 period simple moving average. That's what I use for my line in the sand between a bull and bear market. So uh, this is really the significant point here. You also notice that one doesn't have a number or a letter because it's not really a, uh, it is a cycle 
and no, it's not a cycle high or low, and it's definitely not a wave high or low. So we're going to use these points. You could use this point as well. Actually, that might be the better one. Um, they're equal. Oh, equal. No, actually, this one's a little lower. So let's use that one. Okay, we come up here. Go to our Andrew's Pitchfork. Bada bing, bada boom. And get our high there. Okay. Now you'll notice we got the same type of action, price action, relative to the initial uh, strength set up by these first three points that we did going up. In other words, what I mean by that is we are going down and rather than having to worry about getting stopped out over here, we get an exhaustion move or a very strong dramatic move to the downside that breaks through all the times in the direction of the trade. So again, we say, oh, okay, so we're not going to wait to get out over here. We're going to go ahead and counter five-way pattern and then just get out because that is a very, very strong move, stronger than normal, much stronger than normal. And that's sustainable is the point. And so boom, boom, boom goes up here. Now this one actually did the next day go dramatically down, but you know, hindsight's 2020. <laughs> and notice what it did. It came all the way back. It's just amazing how well this works, uh, the geometry of this. So it comes back. Where does it find resistance? Right here. Where does it find support? Right there. Where does it find resistance? Well, all along this time. So it really worked well. Now we get another exhaustion move, another very dramatic move down. And again, that's an unusual pattern. But I'll tell you, so you might, uh, and this is a real important point for all traders out there, a psychological tip that is absolutely critical. You will see things like this happen. And the common mental response is to say, oh dang, I got out here at the high probability exit, but I should have stayed in because I could have made more money, right? Obviously that's more money than that and you will regret it and then you will try to reverse engineer it and say how could i have known that this would go down now notice the danger the danger is if you stayed in this you're having to stay in for a long retrace above this high above this high right and you potentially would have given away all this profit and we just got in here so it's you're almost giving away all your profit so you can't do that from a risk management or money management point of view, trade after trade over a large sample of data. This is your high probability entry point. You will always find a reason that you could have caught one particular trade, but that has nothing to do with what most trades will do. In other words, we have to trade the rule, not the exception. We have to find what's high probability not what happens this time or that time or any other single instance in the market's movement. Huge problem that a lot of traders run into. You're never going to get the perfect exit every single time. So don't even try. Impossible. No one has ever done it. Nobody will do it. You're not going to be the first. So a couple of great lessons there. One on market geometry with the uh, pitchfork. A lot of people wanted some more extra stuff on that. So there you go. A little more advanced stuff. Some extra things on getting out before the trailing stop. That actually gets you out with bigger profits. And then also a great psychological tip of the day. So if you like this video, please understand that, yes, it's free on YouTube, but in the moral universe, you actually have an obligation, if you receive value from this, to share it with other people. Share it on social media by clicking on one of the share buttons below. In addition, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon and leave a comment because that really encourages me to, well, make more free tutorials for you. Also, I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies called the rubber band trade, which has a really high win-loss ratio. It's a very simple strategy. You can learn about 20 26 short minutes. Get the video explaining that trade strategy absolutely free by clicking on the image in the top left corner or if you're on a mobile device, click on the little eye with the circle around it in the top right corner of this video. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, then click below. There's probably a, a link down below this video or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I'll personally email the video to you with the rubber band trade strategy.